Hi, we have already created a video about doing DDS in the USA after you complete your BDS in India. If you have not checked that video out, do go and check it out. In that, the first step is to clear the INBDE examinations. To explain you more about how to prepare for it, we have with us Dr. Niharika Singh today. Dr. Niharika Singh graduated as a gold medalist from Manipal College of Dental Sciences, Manipal University. Then she went on to clear her INBD examination in her first attempt itself, after which she went on to do preceptorship. In her first CAPIT cycle, she was successful in getting admission into the prestigious University of California in Los Angeles for her DDS program. She is here to share her experience about how she studied and cracked the INBD exam in her first attempt. I am Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Hi, Dr. Niharika Singh. Thank you for taking your time and joining us today. My first question, when you cleared your INBD, what all books did you read and which ones would you recommend those who are planning to give it? Okay, um, it's my pleasure being here. So uh, going ahead with your question. So basically, according to me, the most important resource would be the INBD Dental Dex because they give a question and answer format, but the question and answers are pretty basic, but they also give you like answer cards where they explain why this answer is correct. And those answer cards can help brush up our basics. So I think that's the most important resource. Apart from that, I also refer to Mosby's First Aid Tufts for Pharmacology. And also, mental dental is a great resource for the people who are starting from the basic. It's very good. Okay. So now these are the resources, okay, which will help you answer those questions. But should you brush up on your basics and should they go back to textbooks or directly get into these resources? Okay. I think that's a personal choice. For the people who've recently graduated, they are very much in touch with the subjects. So for them, it's not required. But for the people who probably worked for a few years and have, have lost touch with their um, subjects, for them, they can refer back to the textbooks. But, but then again, the Indian textbooks have a bit of um, difference according to the US culture and the protocols differ. So it's still better to start with the decks or if they are going through the textbooks, they can do it simultaneously so that they know and they don't learn the wrong thing. Understood. So then otherwise, they'll have to unlearn and relearn. So yeah, start exactly. from the right and that's different. Right. right. Okay. And it's, it will be difficult to unlearn the things, right? Got so it. That would be my advice. So did you study in a group or you studied by yourself? Because there are these various WhatsApp or Facebook or Telegram groups where people join, collaborate together and study together. Would you advise that or self-study? I think this again is a personal choice. For me, self-study was more important because you know where you stand. And it's very easy to get caught up with how much people are studying and then feel like I'm not doing enough. So that's one thing why I didn't go through with those groups. But also they are also a good resource where people post their questions and you know you can get in touch with a lot of people who are going through the same stream. So um, again, if people are, um, are comfortable studying with groups, then yeah. But if the people, if somebody is more comfortable studying alone, then I would say self-study is the best. Okay, so do you advise joining these various courses or boot camps available or they are not required? Um, I don't think so. I think I think we can, um, a lot of these resources are available online for free. I don't think anybody needs to join any course. Okay, uh, so what were the tips you have for the audience out there where you was you studied smarter rather than just working harder? So smart study is very important for this exam um, since it's now an integrated exam. So NBD part one syllabus is not as important. So people can easily focus less on um, uh, pathology, microbiology, and you know, our second year subjects. Also pharmacology is very important. So this does not go for pharmacology. Understood. So. Uh... What are the important subjects you told mentioned a few what you told the part one is not that important as of now so what are the important subjects as such okay so let's start with the clinical subjects so resto perio cross is very important but not very high grade treatment plans only what you expect from a general dentist 
apart from that da and occlusion is important so they actually ask values so if you go through imbd dex there are certain questions which where they tell you um the contacts of bit, uh, different teeth and the eruption timings and stuff so they actually ask like what is the eruption time when does the apex close and stuff like that so that is very important apart from that pharmacology is important and uh, for pharmacology also like this phosphonate protocols uh, um antibiotic prophylaxis all these things are very important um and then even the cns drugs so when i started preparing i thought that entire pharmacology wouldn't be important only the stuff that's relevant would be better to study but that but that's wrong <laughs> uh be thorough with pharmacology because they might not ask exactly what drug to use but then it's good to know everything because questions are in depth okay so understanding a subject not just superficially but in depth they might ask questions so yes, even if you're studying pharmacology you should know cns and everything got it yeah uh, okay. how many times you told there are like four to five resources how many times you would advise someone to go through them as in how many rounds of revision so that they are competent enough in that particular topic okay i would say at least twice but the more the better <laughs> so it still depends on how or the retaining capability of people but for me i think twice is sufficient understood so how long does it take if i plan to study and i think once revise it twice so if i'm planning to give the exam later on how many months should i plan for it basically Okay, so again, for fresh grads, I think three months, max to max four months, is sufficient. But for people who, uh, who you know, worked for several years and are diving back again in their studies, I think six seven months. Okay, so you're saying three four months of only studies, or there are some people who are working part time jobs or doing another yeah. course at that point of time. So similarly, okay, so three four months for them also, or is it variable for them? It will be variable. I would say if people are working full time and studying for like four hours a day, I would say two months for studying and then one full month for revision. That is what I would do. Understood. So if you're working part time, you will have to add on months basically so that you can cover it up. Yeah. Definitely. Got it. So what is the best time to give these exams? Okay. So the best time, according to me, would be October to December. because after that i think you should be on top of your sop because that's very important that's what gets you in and it takes like 2 3 months to adequately draft it so i think december to march should be just for capit okay because a lot of people think that i get more time to study they keep stretching their imbd dates and finally take it in december mm -hmm. so they do not have a lot of yeah. time to then work on their sops and everything basically right exactly got it yeah. Uh, and, so yeah, oh, it sorry. takes a lot of time to draft the SOP. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, got it. Uh, so, what is the marking scheme of these IMBD exams? Okay, so um, it's a percentile based exam where seventy five is the passing. So there's no adequate criteria to um, adequately say if you passed or not. It's just that they factor in the difficulty of the exam. So if the exam was more difficult, it's you know it's more likely that you will pass <laughs> okay so there is no also, yeah sorry you were saying something please tell me uh i was saying that it also depends on the person who scored the maximum so your marks will be relative to that okay so they will basically see the person who scored the maximum and based on that they would decide what would be the cutoff for that particular yeah region. so that's not that? explicitly said anywhere but that's what we've come to learn over the years <laughs> okay got it yeah <laughs> uh, so now your practice your work your revised twice gone through the entire resources you have listed okay any tips on for the day of the exam how do they go about giving it before you listen to the answer to that question If you're getting even one point from this video, do not forget to hit the like button below. So um, I would actually say um, so. It's the exam is of two days, right? So the first day they have three hundred and sixty questions. So the first uh, the first two hundred questions are theoretical, and the last sixty questions are case based. So day one is very hectic. Okay. And by the time you reach the last sixty questions, you're already very tired. <laughs> so we don't have the mental capability to, you know, keep going. So I would suggest always have water, always have some food along with you because it's a long day ahead. And apart from that, I also carried a few medicines because I was jet lagged. 
Okay. I was facing nausea, headache and stuff. So I took medicines. I would suggest people do the same because it's very easy to get a headache after, you know, doing so many questions at a time. Understood. So basically, it is more about the mental capacity. So all your preparation, yeah. what you've done physically and everything, at that point of time, you should mm -hmm. be able to recall it. So mentally keeping yourself aware by drinking a lot of water, keeping yourself hydrated mm -hmm. and having some food would help. Perfect. Yeah. So how would you divide your exam time? You said it's a long day, there are a lot of questions. How would you divide that while answering these questions? So it's not like we can choose which section to answer first. Everybody will start with 100 theoretical questions, then they'll have 15 minutes of break, another 100 questions, then 15 minutes of break, then the 60 case-based questions. So the only thing I would say is don't rush through questions because, you know, it's better to take your time, understand the questions, especially for the case-based ones. Yeah. So it's basically we should be calm and composed and not rush through them. Right. Yeah. You got it. Always trust your gut. Don't change too many questions because I, I did that <laughs> and I regretted it for a long time. So don't change. So don't change your answers. Your first answer was correct. <laughs> And another thing is that many of these questions can have two right answers. So don't, because many of these questions will have answers that are very similar to each other. Many of the times both are correct. Sometimes both might not be correct. So choose the one that's, that sounds better. The one that's closer to the ideal answer. And another thing is that, oh yeah, for pharmacology, you don't need to learn brand names. They usually give brand names and the generic name along with it. So because brand names differ in the U.S. Uh, how can, now if I give the exam today, how long does it take for the results to come out usually? I think it's around two weeks. Minimum is two weeks. Um, they say it can, it can take up to nine weeks, but I've seen most of the people receive theirs at two to three weeks. Okay, so two to three weeks is the average span, and the worst case, it might be nine weeks basically. Mm, yeah. Got it. Now, a lot of people when they are studying, okay, uh, mm -hmm. see if they are self-studying or with studying with others, like how you told they might compare themselves with others or they might end up thinking that I have not, I have studied all this, but what will I remember on that point of day? What the questions I've studied, will that come or not? So there's a lot of mental fear during the process. How did you overcome that? So there's no one answer to overcoming fear. So the thing I kept telling myself was that these sleepless nights, sleepless nights would be worth it and they totally are. So, you know, just keep telling yourself that it will get better and it does. <laughs> it surely does. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you're basically focusing on the end goal effort. Yeah, exactly. Just have the end goal in your mind and you'll do fine. Got it. Uh, so what is your advice to someone who's planned to start studying for IMBD today or just started the process? I would say you have a long road ahead, but keep keep conf uh, be confident. Uh, you know, you can do this. It's, it's not a rocket science. You can do this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, now you are extremely resourceful and anyone who contact you, you uh, contacts you, try to help them. So how does yeah. someone contact you basically? So um, I'm pretty active on Instagram. If anybody wants help, they can surely text me. I might take some time, but I will definitely get to it. <laughs> sure. So we will share her Instagram handle on our comment section below, as well as we will be collaborating with her on our Instagram page. So you can contact her from there as well. Thank you, Dr. Niyarika Singh, for taking your time and joining us today. You're welcome. If you like this video, do not forget to go and check out our other two videos where we have interviewed people who have been successful in getting into the DDS program in the USA after their BDS in India.